hello. Just, uh, just here in the kitchen. Uh, I had uh, just uh, done a meditation a, a, a very short time ago, and um, so anyway, so I'm still uh, in the kitchen for that. And um, that's where I had done the previous one, <laughs> I guess. Uh, at any rate, uh, lit, uh, nine candle wicks and uh, sitting on the floor of the kitchen or near the floor of the kitchen doing that. And, uh, now it's time for our daily meditations. Uh, my semi-trusty little uh, tripody situation, and uh, I thought we'd uh, sit here. Maybe we'll sit over here. Hey, buddy. Uh, obviously, Saki's with me as he usually is, or very often is. He is sitting over there, wondering what I'm doing. Not on a blanket like he is. Of course, I'm just on the bare wood floor. He's probably like, well, why aren't you on a blanket? You, you sometimes seem like you could be smart. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we'll see if we can set this up. There's the uh, candle that we had lit. I suppose before I sat down, I could have showed it to you. But uh, I'm just going to see if... Uh, in some way tripodily works it's very precarious and uh, I don't know if it'll stay but if it doesn't I think it'll slide off and you'll be looking at the ceiling for a moment so I'm sitting here next to the uh, dishwasher and uh, next to some dishes and next to the dinner I haven't cooked but I had a cup of tea I don't know where I set it down I sat it down next to Saki. Uh, there's the uh, artwork by Krista Witten there. Uh, one piece is called Passion. So, check it out. There they are. So, uh, it's a pretty tough day for a lot of people. Change over power here in the United States in terms of the, the uh, one third of the government that has a, a neat and clean single person changeover. And so uh, there's some um, I hesitate to say extreme, but maybe an exaggerated seems like a moralizing, but strong. Uh, responses, reactions on either side. So yeah, strong reactions on either side. So forget the earlier words I was trying out, please. And uh, so we just did a meditation to see if we can offer some comfort, solace, insight, quiet time, tea uh, for those people. And, uh, it feels to be uh, we'll be entering a time here of uh, Practice at empathy, practice at listening, and that means to all sorts of people, not just people that feel aggrieved or whatever. I didn't mean to sound, sound dismissive when I said whatever, but I'm sorry if it came out that way. And so I'm going to just do a meditation um, to touch base with, perhaps even hone locate, hone, locate, connect to, hone those skills of empathy and listening. And so, excuse me, practice.
bringing my mind into a quiet place. I kind of picture like a stone, you know, it gives you that sense of uh, never changingness. Um, a stone does. And obviously a place of firm support, and like foundational. I kind of rest my mind on a stone in my mind. Actually, I have a jade pillow that I practice that with for some time. So I kind of literally rested my literal head on a literal stone. And it's from there that I'm able to listen. To move beyond hearing and listening. Too often when we try and listen, we actually end up forming our own thoughts while we hear. Or, you know, wait, waiting for the opportunity socially to interject with your own story or joke or opinion or uh, commentary. And so that mind stone is a commentaryless patient without waiting. It's quiet, it won't have anything to say, it's just listening. But it's gently and lovingly connecting. It's sincere and it's listening. It's not unable to hear. Like you might imagine a a literal stone you may imagine cannot hear literally. But this is not without the ability to speak. This is listening without commentary. So there's a kung fu to it. There's a choice to but not commenting. And in the listening, if I can recognize a really basic emotional component to what I'm hearing, like desire, or distress, sort of things, like a very basic, uh, you think about the uh, pantry staples of the emotional closet, so not very complex emotions. Um, so one way to think of it is like a deck of cards, you know, there's 52 cards and there's 13 cards in each suit, so um, it's, it's a lot to keep your head on, it's, even, it's hard for people to count cards even, it's, that's a lot of things with variation in them. But if we think of, in this example, there's these 13 experiences that are all hearts, and these 13 experiences that are all spades, and clubs, and diamonds. Uh, in this example, we, we just have four basic emotional staples in the emotional closet. You know, four basic staples. The suits, of which there are a lot of varieties. So if one of the staples in your closet is pasta, you, know, you could have 12 types of pasta, but pasta is covered, you know. So, if I get caught up in thinking as I'm listening, you know, connecting as I'm listening, and thinking, boy, <laughs> I've never been angry at an intern that worked for me because of what the boss said in a meeting directed to the marketing department. And it's like, I can't relate to that. Well, that's just saying, well, I don't have a three of diamonds in my hand. So I 
nothing to relate to. But diamonds, I know. Like, I have had a person, um, maybe less educated, less aged, for example, that's why I said intern, than myself, who has made this similar type of conf this type of confusion and had this effect on someone, etc. Doesn't matter the example it matters. Uh, it would have mattered if I had a good example, but I don't. So the idea is that I don't have to have a seven of diamonds to connect to your seven of diamonds, but if I have or know a diamond, which is just one of four, then I can connect. So rather than getting bogged down in the details, as I'm listening, and the mind quickly notices where I don't relate, instead I just look for the suit. Like, what are they at a basic level? A pantry staple of emotional cupboard. What are they saying? They're saying there's jealousy. They're saying there's fear. They're saying there's frustration. They're saying there's anger. They're saying there's sorrow. They're saying there's grief. They're saying there's confusion. Like, oh, I know those. I've never been confused about that thing. That seems silly to be confused about. I've never been confused to that degree. Or I've never been confused while I'm angry. That's right. You don't have clubs and hearts in your hand, but you know both. And so, resting the mind on the mind stone. And coming into a sense of the basic staples in the emotional cupboard can help me then listen and relate. And so I'm going to just come into the Mind Stone and then take stock of the pantry. the mind's done. the pantry. So this isn't supposed to be exhaustive. It's not supposed to be the final answer that a psychologist would recognize or it doesn't have to be right. I'm just doing my what's available to me to pay attention the way I see it, the way that I feel it, what is in that pantry. And I can do that with some regularity and then I start to realize, oh, those two things are really one thing. You know, these, uh, these uh, Thai noodles and the spaghetti are pretty much the same thing. They weren't two separate suits. They were just both pasta. And that's fine. And to the extent that we can come up with a very small uh, list in the staples, uh, you're far easier then to be able to relate to whatever the specifics of somebody else's uh, emotional communication is. So, that's our uh, Mind Stone, and uh, Emotional Cupboard Meditation. <laughs> so, thank you.